let's continue uh, looking at the aspects of love that you're describing in, in, in your book. The uh, unconditional love is appreciating aspects of life. Uh, and out of the, the 63 different um, aspects of love that you're uh, describing in here, there's one that I really do want to include uh, in amongst these interviews we're doing, and that's compassion. Because I think compassion is one of these things that not actually understood perhaps as clearly uh, as it might be um, but it's it's a to me it's a beautiful quality it's one of these qualities that really does fill the heart you know when you think of compassion the heart warms there's a, there's a, there's a flow of energy from the heart um, and I mean even even perhaps to some extent more clearly than there is with the word love because sometimes we use the word love so loosely you know I love this oh I love going there and, you know there's, there isn't that much passion in, in the word sometimes but with compassion there is and so clearly this is this is a really important aspect of love um, which I think will will bear some some discussion uh, and, and I'd really like to hear what you've got to say about it. What I'll do first of all is is to read what you've said in, in, in the book, just the three paragraphs there, and let's see if we can um, pick up some points from it. Compassion lifts the energy of any situation into its natural state of unconditional love. Unlike sympathy, which believes in the mistake and empowers it, Compassion conveys our warmth and respect, along with strength, wisdom, and understanding. It recognizes the, the divine perfection in every action and allows for this balance to return. We have the power to lift the spirit of any person, place, or condition through our compassion. We begin with compassion for ourselves and our experiences. When we recognize the interconnection of all reality, we see the reflection in every experience and embrace the opportunity to raise the expression. Unconditional love is compassion. Compassion shares the strength of love with everyone and everything. Right, that's very nice. Um, I, I particularly Picked, <coughs> picked up on we begin with compassion for ourselves and our experiences that's something that I've never really thought about before I mean, what, what, where would you like to take it up from, from what I've just read well Begin we can certainly um, address the, the compassion for self as a way to understand love but before we kind of get to that maybe we'll build up to that piece mm -hmm. because that's kind of what happened in my life is I've kind of built up to compassion. Um, as we've been talking about the various aspects, qualities of love, one of the previous ones we've discussed was gratitude. And I said that particular discussion, we talked about how gratitude, when we don't always understand unconditional love uh, or how to embrace it, how to apply it, how to flow with unconditional love for self and others, gratitude is one of those great initial things that we can begin that helps us understand unconditional love uh, more universally, the more we kind of use gratitude in our everyday life. Compassion is very similar in the sense that we can begin to look at life through more compassionate eyes, with a more compassionate heart, as a way to increase our understanding of unconditional love. What happened for me early on is that I always had kind of a challenge with the word sympathy. It was another one of those words that we banter around in our daily vocabulary, both individually and, and culturally. And for some reason, it never sounded like a very empowering word. And the reason I share, you know, that the word sympathy in the, in the same discussion as compassion is I, I think we need to really understand what sympathy is and what it is not to better understand what compassion is and what compassion is not. And also I would add in a third word, which is empathy. Because all of these three words are seemingly on the surface quite synonymous, and yet they really have a very different energy about each one. And out of those, as you already mentioned, the compassion is something that seems to rise above 
um, more freely than the other two. Sympathy, the way I've you know kind of really delved into it and understood it is sympathy has a tendency to be the common response that we give you know culturally to problematic or challenging or traumatic or dramatic events. We extend our sympathy. And if we really step back and look at what that is doing energetically is when we say we, we have sympathy, again, you know, on the surface, it sounds like that this is the right thing to do. It's, you know, this is what we do by tradition. But let's step back and look at what's really happening is sympathy more rightly understood as it sees a problem, sees a difficulty, sees a challenge, sees a drama and says, I believe in that drama. And so I'm extending my sympathy. There, there's a sense of love, absolutely, and sympathy. It's saying, I, I embrace you and hope to help you, you know, feel differently or better or give you courage and strength. You know, that's our intention with sympathy. And yet sympathy tends to focus on the event, the problem. Usually, of course, by the time we're extending our sympathy, the event is in the past, mm -hmm. which is, means we're basically bringing up the past again and again and again and again. And I realize for many people, this discussion about sympathy, compassion, and empathy will be a matter of semantics. I mean, if people are, are rooted in their, their definition of sympathy, then they may not understand the subtleness mm -hmm. uh, of these differences. So, you know, bear with us as we kind of look at this, is that sympathy, by looking at the problem, looking at the difficulty, looking at the challenge, it then becomes somewhat exclusive of the solution. In other words, we're placing our attention on that which, you know, has been and that which was, you know, a problem, a mistake, a challenge, you know, something of, of, of greater difficulty. And it isn't necessarily empowering. So it doesn't necessarily give people strength that kind of commiserates mm -hmm. is another wonderful way of looking at sympathy. So sympathy is actually a, a vocabulary term that I have essentially removed from my life to the greatest part over the last couple of decades because I really don't wish to empower the, the difficult moments. I'd rather come from a different energy. Well, one of the other energies that I, I started to recognize was empathy is that I could empathize with people if I happened to have had a similar experience. Empathy being more of an emotional energy, emotional similarity. When we empathize with somebody, we can say, oh, I went through that difficulty Sympathy, you may not have gone through that difficulty, but you're extending your, your embrace. Mm -hmm. Empathy kind of comes from this emotional energy is, I too suffered, I too had a similar challenge, I too had a difficulty, and I'm going to empathize with you because, again, in a way, it has a tendency, although there's love there, and certainly there's a, a slightly brighter energy than not offering sympathy or empathy, but still the focus tends to be more on the, the past challenge, the difficulty, the, or the experience that a person's going through. It doesn't necessarily, in most instances, empower people, which gives us this understanding of well, then what is compassion? If it's similar, compassion really kind of is that sense of unconditional love. It's that sense of self-acceptance in accepting all things around us. Compassion really generates so much more from the heart in the sense that it is more universal and it's saying, I believe in you, period or I believe in you dot, dot, dot. I believe in myself. I believe in all things as being right just for what they are. And I know I, you, the next person, the situation, there's a bigger picture. There's strength, there's opportunity, there's courage, there's overcoming, there's embracing. You know, there are all these qualities and compassion that says, wow, this may have happened and I know you'll overcome it. I know I'll overcome it. You know, again, because we're talking about all of these qualities and aspects as being first and foremost in ourselves mm -hmm. and then outwardly directed. Well, you think of sympathy and empathy. We tend to have sympathy and empathy for other people, but we don't tend to have sympathy and empathy for ourselves. So mm -hmm. this isn't sympathy and empathy are externalized expressions towards other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from my perspective, it tends to embrace the negative, embrace the problem, embrace the thing, and kind of keeps recreating it. Whereas compassion is something we can actually first and foremost have for ourselves. We can have compassion for an acceptance for an opening, an embrace for us just for who we are. 
And we can also extend our compassion to other people by embracing who they are at their core. It doesn't matter what they've gone through or what they're going through. We have compassion for that because certainly we have probably in some instances a sympathy and an empathy also with that. But compassion is something that says, I love you just for who you are and you're more than this experience. That to me is a very empowering position because it's giving a person a sense of feeling of hope and a bigger picture when in fact, while they have had an experience or are going through an experience, hope is one of those things that is often, you know, goes right out the window. They lose hope. And so coming along and, and kind of amplifying the problem through sympathy or empathy doesn't necessarily give people hope or, or faith or an inner strength and an inner courage. It doesn't necessarily allow them to have their grieving. It doesn't necessarily, you know, it kind of like it, it lessens the very thing that we think we're intending to give. Compassion is just in a way I has to say neutral, it, it, it's so universal that it's saying, I recognize my own strength and courage. I recognize you have that same strength and courage. I recognize my own faith and hope and understanding of that bigger picture. And therefore I extend to you in this time, a greater sense of hope, faith, courage, and understanding of something bigger mm -hmm. that this too shall pass. And I know you'll, you'll rise above it in your own way. That's a very different way of taking any of these difficulties that we face in life on, you know, many times on a regular basis and lending it an energy that actually helps us overcome and embrace and accept in ways that we wouldn't necessarily be able to typically. And certainly, you know, again, as a wonderful step, if we can understand now this kind of new description of compassion, we can begin to have more compassion for ourselves which will help us better understand unconditional love. So like gratitude, you know, compassion is something we can begin to generate in ourselves. We can open our own heart for ourselves and we can begin to open our heart for other people in ways that we haven't been before. And it, it is a bit of a cultural leap because these traditions, these, these definitions run really quite deep. I mean, sympathy, mm -hmm. I, I can say over the last couple of decades when I, when I discussed the, the kind of the understandings of sympathy, compassion, and empathy, people understand it. But it is such a natural, instantaneous word. It's in all the greeting cards. You know, here us Western folk, we like to go to the little card store and send off immediately, you know, a sympathy card. You know, it's very, very challenging. I, I trust me, I go through lots of card shops looking for the cards that, that don't use that particular word. It's so ingrained. And yet, what would happen if we would begin to, say, send cards of compassion? You know, send cards that are really universally embracing. Uh, well, that happens when we start to understand it better for ourselves. Again, that's this inside out approach. And compassion is something we can begin to cultivate for ourselves. And in many instances, simultaneously cultivate with those around us. You know, every time we think of sympathy or empathy, we can take it to another level and say, well, let me just have universal compassion. I don't have a, a judgment or an attitude one way or the other. I'm simply offering my love for people to do with as they wish mm -hmm. in the way they need to. I simply give myself compassion to do with as I wish and as I need to. So compassion doesn't necessarily imply some sort of action to follow that, uh, some action of It's, it's not people. necessarily an action in that sense, and this is where it comes back to gratitude and even I would say peace. You know, as we said early on, peace is a very dynamic energy. Compassion is also a very dynamic energy. People feel the energetic vibration, the feeling of compassion. And when certainly the way I use the term and the way I empower the term compassion, there's a feeling of great universal love. And for somebody that is accustomed to sympathy, both giving it and receiving it, they too will feel the essence of love in sympathy. Because in sympathy, in empathy, and in compassion, there's love. And for somebody who is, is sympathetic, you know, they're going to recognize the, the pieces of love that are in that same energy, but energetically, it's not as full an expression as I believe compassion can be. Mm -hmm. Compassion is such a heartfelt universal acceptance that people will feel the compassion because they feel like they're being offered an energy of, of strength and of courage, not of you know, the the problem or the 
the mutual vibrational like empathy where you know I had the problem and boy that really drew, drew me down so I'm going to have empathy with you and it's going to help you stay where you are compassion mm -hmm. is a lifting energy and I think that's how we can really begin to understand it is that it lifts our spirits it lifts the spirits of those around us because it's not asking anything of anyone it's universal acceptance and that feeling is what people will respond to as we do and it wasn't something that came readily in my life early on. I mean, compassion is something that has steadily built and opened up my own heart. And I, I can say now I look at life and people's experiences and my experiences so dramatically different mm -hmm. through an open heart of compassion than I did, you know, very early on. So it's not, again, it's not a static moment of instant compassion. It's a building, it's an opening of the heart that grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and, grows and that passion fills all the voids and interestingly enough it also causes us to recognize the unconditional love that is held within compassion and the compassion that's within unconditional love i mean it's that circle of life again so you're saying that compassion is a heartfelt quality and you've talked about how compassion opens up the heart and this is something i've, I've been wanting to ask you about really because it, it it seems to, I think what you're saying is that the, the heart needs to be opened really to not just perhaps to experience compassion, but many of the different aspects of, of love. Um, my question really is, well, how, do you, how does the heart open? How do, you, how do you cultivate that, the ability of the heart to experience and express compassion? I mean, is it a chicken and egg thing? You, <laughs> you know, you experience yes. <laughs> compassion, and you see, you you recognize the value of, of 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 expressing compassion, and the heart opens. Or, you know, do you need a full heart really before you're capable of experiencing, uh, offering compassion? It happens to everybody in their own unique way, where we begin to go more from our mind and our mental creations to a heart-centered way of living. One of the reasons why I originally created this list of 63 qualities of love was because I'd already been looking at the whole understanding of unconditional love in my life. I, I went from a space of, you know, reacting to everything in life and life being something outside of me and bigger than me to realizing fairly quickly that there was something going on with me. And I, in fact, had far more uh, to do with the type of life I was living than I had been led to believe or understand. You know, I, I looked at life and I responded to life rather than creating life. And for me, it was not, you know, a traumatic event or any one event or, or a, you know, a spontaneous vision or awakening. It was simply a shift in understanding. And unconditional love was one of those um, ideas, concepts initially that caught my attention, that caused me to want to explore it more. And in that exploration, I started to notice that there were qualities of love that could help me better understand what love really meant. So in a way, unconditional love is universal, undefinable, it's an experience, it's a, it's a way of being, it's a, it's a knowing in its ultimate sense. And yet when you're coming from a very logical mind, from a very you know, outward focused look at life, it certainly can help tremendously if we can perhaps break it out in pieces and understand all these wonderful components, these qualities, these aspects of love that we're experiencing every day in our life. And by contemplating, say in this case, compassion, or as we've done in past peace, uh, gratitude, each of these, these fragments, these, these pieces of the puzzle of unconditional love help put together the bigger picture of unconditional love we can actually start to cultivate it more consciously than we've ever given ourselves an understanding that it's possible. In other words, unconditional love, generally speaking, you know, culture by culture all around the globe is typically relegated to something outside of ourselves and quite divine and certainly probably not of this lifetime. And here we are discussing the fact that it is already within us. It is who we are and we can actually bring more of this unconditional love into our life by removing the layers that we've kind of used to protect ourselves or, or, or mislead or misguide ourselves 
to believing that it's not something within. These qualities help to cultivate it, and yet there will always be that spark in the heart. Someone attracted to these interviews already has a spark of an awakening that says, I want to understand more love in my life. And some, for some people it has been you know, a traumatic event, a, a, a very prominent disease or illness, you know, something that, that's been kind of you know, unexpectedly entered their lives that gives them pause to begin to question you know, is it all about the head or is it really about the heart? Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have a unique experience of that. So I can't say for any one individual how they will cultivate from the initial spark what they will do because, you know, the reason they're coming to their heart is unique unto themselves. What we're striving to do here is give guidance and, and insight and awareness to how to expand what's already there in a greater way by, in a way, taking it apart, looking at various aspects to assemble the wholeness again that's already there. Because, you know, all of these words, that, all these qualities are synonymous with each other. And that's why they're aspects, they're, they're qualities of love. And yet by understanding it individually, it helps us understand the bigger picture, especially when walking through our daily lives where all these qualities have a tendency to show up more individually than collectively. So, is it is the place to start really by generating compassion for yourself, or feeling compassion for yourself, uh, and being aware of the kind of things that that make you feel compassionate to yourself before you can really then experience it towards other people. Or I mean, all sorts of events could, could generate compassion, couldn't they? I mean, there are so many people in the world who, who suffer in so many different ways. And compassion is one of, one of the, the feelings that tend to arise when you see people suffering, isn't it? Well, and, and suffering in of its own general nature tends to be temporary. And the same strength that's within me is the same strength that's within you is in within everybody. Now, not everybody can see their own strength or have their own courage given, you know, their life circumstances and their belief systems and their perspectives on life. Compassion still looks at the bigger picture of understanding that that potential is there and that potential is universal. So rather than focusing on the problem, Compassion says, I'm focusing on the solution, which is the collective whole within each person. We're fanning the flame in a way of the other individual's love. Well, the only way we can really understand compassion if, is if we also include ourselves in that equation. Mm -hmm. With a lot of these qualities, it is easier to, at times, have compassion for another than it is for ourselves. And in other moments, it's easier to have compassion for ourselves when we really have struggle with having compassion for someone else. Um, in fact, when it comes to struggle, we often, you know, run in fear because we, if we identify with a struggle, we also tend to think, well, that struggle could be my struggle or that struggle was my struggle and I don't want to have that struggle again. Compassion is simply a, an inner knowing and an inner awareness that wherever we are, we will have and we do have the capacity to overcome in one way or another. And we're affording that same understanding to others that this may be their situation at the moment, but it's not the permanent situation. Mm. And we're all bigger than all of these situations. So does it begin within? Does it become externalized? It's all the same. It depends on where our attention is. If we're outward focused, then that's an opportunity to give compassion to something that we maybe weren't giving compassion to. And if we're inward focused and we're, <laughs> interestingly enough, compassion, in order to you know kind of express compassion, we often identify with that which is not compassion. Mm -hmm. It's just like when we start to say we want more peace in our life, we often have more chaos, which helps us identify the peace within the chaos. Well, compassion sometimes requires some deeper digging, some, some deeper unconditional acceptance. Mm -hmm. And certainly any compassion we can extend to ourselves will cause us to have more compassion and therefore give more compassion. Any energy of compassion that we can extend to another will also still build more compassion on ourselves because we're still flowing the compassion through ourselves. 
-hmm. So to say that it's one begins the other is they all happen simultaneously. The idea is expand compassion whichever way you can and move beyond these old definitions that really embody and, and empower the problem and move to a solution. And you know, when we start doing this, the compassion lifts and rises. We start doing things out of compassion. You know, so there is an action component, absolutely. There's a feeling of compassion. Mm -hmm. And we also then find our own courage and strength. We tend to then do actions of kindness, which are far more compassionate in nature. You know, all of these qualities, we do them somewhat selfishly to begin to cultivate them within ourselves, but yet not only do we benefit, but all mankind benefits because we become different people as a result. Mm. And the more compassion we find in our hearts, the more compassion we can experience and express. It's a, it's one of and the compassion is already in the heart. You know, I think that's what's so astounding to this whole unconditional love piece is these aren't things we, we cultivate in a way to bring more of something we think we don't have. Mm -hmm. We can cultivate these things because they're already there and we can expand them. And, you know, again, typically speaking, culturally, we are conditioned to look for all these qualities outside ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we look for them in people, places, and things. We're looking for compassion from other people. We're looking for all these, these we want more peace in the world and we want more gratitude. All of these things are already within us and the only way they can become more in the world is by expanding them within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then that interconnected piece is what's so beautiful because now we've created an exponential opportunity where others will feel the compassion and then they will perhaps generate more compassion for themselves and then in the future have more compassion for other people. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that expansion is what is so vital. If we create more peace in ourselves, we instantly create more peace in the world because we're more peaceful and we're part of the world. Same with compassion. Any of these qualities, the same thing, that which we grow and expand universally within ourselves becomes more universal with everyone around us. Mm -hmm. I suppose the more we understand the nature of these different qualities, the more we can learn to cultivate them and, and express them. Identify them and allow them to, you know, to realize that they are in us. Mm -hmm. you know, rather than externalizing or thinking that there are concepts that if somehow we can take a magic pill, we'll all of a sudden have compassion. Well, these are things that, you know, we have to kind of weed our garden. We have to kind of clear out the things that are not compassionate in order to allow compassion to expand and grow and thrive. Same with peace. You know, we need to cultivate peace in our own individual being through our thoughts and our feelings or our physical countenance in order to experience more peace on the planet. It's not some magical time and, you know, when everybody all of a sudden says, oh, we're having peace on the planet. It's because each of us are taking the steps forward in our journey to cultivate these qualities already within us and then add them to the collective. Well, that's very nice, Harold. Thanks very much. Pleasure.